Hey guys, here's the gear for today. Got a plan to head with all the blue in this label and the perfectly matching GSB logo there. I could have maybe had a, a gray or a blue handle. I bet I have a brush like that and everything would have been a matched set, right? Well, uh, I haven't used this Leviathan in a long time. It's the uh, Glissant formula, I believe. And, and so I am pairing it with a razor I haven't used in a long time, the Rockwell 6S, stainless steel there. And uh, one of my favorite brushes is this Saponificio Veracino uh, High Mountain uh, Manchuria White, I believe is what they call it. And I, I really enjoy it. And like I said, the uh, soap is Leviathan Leather, Coffee, and Sandalwood are the main scents there. And... It has undergone some uh, label changes as he's done maybe the Excelsior version. And so it uh, has changed a little bit over the years. But I'll tell you what, that white label soap is tremendous. You've got the, uh, I'm sorry, this, this is probably not white label, um, the Glissant, wonderful base. And then came uh, Reserve, and then came... Uh, Excelsior, and then you've got PP8, aka Soft Heart, um, just all of those wonderful soap bases that are, are just extra special. And I may be missing one right above Glissant. Yeah, Glissant, and then Reserve, and then I think it was Excelsior was next. I, I guess, unless my brain is just having an aneurysm. Let us get this relatively un low use blade here ready. Four or five uses on it. GSB works for me in many, 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 many razors very well. The story behind the Rockwell, and I, I put out a mail call recently that uh, spoke about how I used a Rockwell for a while, but then I tried the Carve, and it just blew me away. R3 is what you can see once everything is assembled, and that is what, in case you don't know about Rockwell, that is the setting. Not the setting that's pointing up toward the blade, it's the one you can see when everything is assembled. I wish that they would have and this doesn't make any sense, but two and three are my favorite plates for the Rockwell when I used it. And so I wish that the two and the three obviously would have been on the same plate. And then I could have just ignored all those other plates. Uh, but obviously you can't put a, a one and a four together probably. That wouldn't make too much sense. Um, but and, and so for me, the plate with the one and the three and the plate with the two and the four are the ones that got the action. One is so mild that's pretty much ineffective for me in a way that's good because if it's ineffective for me i bet there are guys out there who need a super mild shave for some reason and and so it's it's there for them and so that's cool right the and so the two gives me the smoothest shave that the rock wheel is going to give me the three gives me one with a little bit more blade feel and uh, but still in a pretty comfortable range at least that's the way i remember it probably been two years since i have used this model and so how did i end up with it because i did in fact sell my rockwell pretty quick after i got my carve car love the carve so much across pretty much every metric it beat the rockwell at least for my uses right now some people try the carve in the rockwell and they walk away thinking the rockwell is the best and that's fine right me, I just thought the Carve was overwhelmingly better than the Rockwell. I sold my Rockwell, and I haven't regretted it at all. I have ended up with this one, as I mentioned in past videos, because I bought a box of razors, and this was one of them. And while I have it, before I sell it again, I figured I would uh, shave with it. And let's remember, let's refresh, because I compare a lot. And so maybe has my technique changed? Uh, are things different now to where maybe this presents something different or at the very least it'll confirm what I remember about the experience with this razor. Uh, 
the issue is that the carve supports the blade close to the edge on the underside, much closer to the edge than the Rockwell does. I think I'm looking at about six millimeters of overhang before you get to the support. Also, the Rockwell is not really an attractive razor. It's kind of a, a, an industrial beast. You look at it from the bottom and you can, uh, and from the side, and it's just not as attractive as many razors out there. Uh, but people who buy it and use it usually aren't the kind of people who are dwelling and focused on that uh, attractiveness of a razor. Uh, they want one. And for a long time, this was the reigning champion of the stainless steel razors, at least ones that were around the $100 range. And uh, the carve is over $100, um, but uh, to me, it's, it's a little over $100 to get one base plate. Um, and, uh, and to me, it's worth it. And, and to me, uh, this is a heavy guy. Uh, this is the matte finish. They only offered the matte finish for as long as I knew about the Rockwell. So let us, now that he's loaded up. Oh, and how, how you wonder if you're, uh, if there are a few of you out there who are curious, how does it uh, make it adjustable? Well, you see on the side of each plate, you've got these rails and that's what pushes up into the bottom of the top cap here, pushes the blade up into the concave surface of the top cap. And so then it makes this safety bar here a certain distance away from the edge of the blade, in essence, changing the gap. And so these rails are taller on the more aggressive plates, and they are shorter by just a bit on the less aggressive plates. And that's how they change the, the distance there. Change the gap, change the aggression, almost always, if everything else remains a given. Get my face wet here, and I'm also going to fill up my 40 ml cup here, my jigger that I'm using lately. I think I'm liking that more than the syringe. It's a little bit of a pain in the beginning because it takes a bit to get precisely 40 uh, milliliters in there. But then after that, it's a nice experience using that instead of the syringe. Well, if you know me at all, I can't leave anything unmodified if I think of a good way to improve it. And so just now I thought, well, that's if that is the headache of using this jigger system, then why don't I take my Sharpie that I use for marking my blades as I tick off uses, and I'll take that 40 ml graduation there. And can you see the little black tick mark I put right there? And that's easy to see when I have the jigger down there and the filling it up. And so it just wasn't a problem at all filling, filling this guy up. And whenever that wears out because of age, I've always got my Sharpie handy and I can just re, remark it. All right, so that is ready. At the end of the shave, I'll be able to see how much water I used. I want to get my face wet and then we'll load up the soap. Man, it's been maybe a couple of years since I used this soap. The Rockwell was the first premium razor that I bought, and at the time it was difficult to justify the cost. But it was talked about so much, and I just decided maybe it was even a Christmas present to myself. Who knows? Birthday, something like that. And so that was the first premium razor that I bought. And this is one of the first soaps that I bought. I bought it off Amazon, and that was before I knew about the used market. Uh, out in different forums and Reddit and places like that. And so this one is one of the first. And so we're taking one of the first premium razors I ever bought and using one of the first soaps. All right, I'm gonna shake a lot of the water out here. And let's do a 30 second load because I can't remember about the Glisson base. And 15 seconds rolls around on the clock right there. So we'll go to the 45 mark. Medium pressure. This is a two band knot with fairly soft tips. It is not, it does not gel. And so the tips are very soft. However, they are uh, not, not kind of artificially soft because of that sponge effect that the gelling produces. And about five more seconds. And there we go. The coffee is very evident. In this scent, oh, and the leather. Who knew coffee and leather would be such a wonderful pairing? 
one and a half days of growth approximately. So a little bit more, probably not one and a half, a little bit less than that, but a little bit more than a day. It is a shame that it, I have so many soaps that I can't use enjoyable ones like this as often as I would like. That's the burden of a, a large soap collection. And here we go. I was probably using these glissant soaps back when I wasn't recording the duration of the load, that kind of information. So who knows how close it'll be. Leviathan had an interesting bit about it. It was either it was released with a, a different uh, artwork last year, the year before. Man, it really surprised me. It, it just it was a, an artistic piece created. And it just, I don't know, it, it, it just didn't resonate with the public the way Will was hoping it would. It, it represented all the right pieces. You know, each, each bit in the, in the artist's rendering you know, had, a, had a meaning and a purpose uh, relating to the scent or the purpose of the scent. And it was like a, a, a worm, a alien coming at you that had uh, cheeks wide and then head and uh, the forehead and the chin were, were tall, and so it looked like a star. And then with the colors and stuff, it was just kind of odd. And some people liked it, and I guess enough people didn't where Will responded, Okay, I get it. We'll change it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I love that about Will because he... Uh, because, and here's what I love about him, not that he necessarily said, hey, okay, I'll change it, but he's willing to give stuff a try. He has adventuresome sense, and he is at the top of his game with scent production, but he's kind of, um, he's got a bunch of failures too. It kind of reminds me of Babe Ruth. He's, he hits so many home runs, but like you tell your kids, you know, the champions don't always hit home runs. Babe Ruth struck out more than anybody else. It's, it's kind of what we tell about that whole situation. And so it reminds me of Will because he definitely has some. Like, I don't think that Turkish Delight scent that he made has, uh, has gone over super well. It may be I'm wrong, but, you know, there, and there, there are a few like that that he that just didn't, didn't like I say, resonate with, with the public. Uh, whether it was the right time or whether it was just a scent that nobody was going to jump on in big masses, who knows? But uh, I love the way he takes risks. Like with Night Music, it was a scent that was very close to his heart. Uh, something, uh, it was uh, kind of with uh, an homage to his mom and things like that, but it did not go well in general with the public. And uh, I am glad to have a tub of it. I was holding it in my hands tonight, smelling it. And I can appreciate it, and I really enjoy it, and I'm glad I have some. But he has some um, soaps that came and went because they just didn't do all that great. Look at this lather. That is tremendous. That is wonderful looking. So I love that he tries experiments and puts stuff out there because then what we end up with in the shave community is a, a rich and diverse suite of products. If everybody just does the safe stuff, we don't really grow too much, right? 
All right, I also wanted to show you the packaging. Um, for a while there, Rock, Rockwell quality control was high, and in general, if you ordered from them, you were gonna get a good product. That has changed a little bit, and they've had some downturns. They had, a couple years ago, the Model T adjustable razor that they were gonna put out, and it was kind of a disaster. Uh, they, they ended up having to not make all the parts from stainless steel, and if you've got zinc alloy parts in there, then you're kind of defeating the point, especially if they're uh, connected parts that are going to wear out. And, and, uh, and so then that is not what a person who buys a stainless steel razor is going to want. Um, and they had some quality control issues with alignment and things like that with it. Uh, a lot of delays in its development. It's one of those Kickstarter kind of things where people could pre-order. And it took a very long time to, to make it happen. And it, it, you don't see them around very much. Some people really like them. Uh, in some cases, the QC issues have been resolved. Um, but they definitely didn't take the world by storm like Rockwell, I'm sure, hoped that they would. But they have gotten a very nice uh, case here. Uh, vinyl or whatever, textured vinyl, to look like leather. Uh, I guess it could be a, a, a light, thin leather coating. Um, kind of a velvety interior here. And for to protect everything during shipping, a little bit of foam there. And then, of course, the razor sits here. I don't, maybe they cut it out a little uh, longer for the other models. I, I don't really know. I don't think they have different handle options for this one, at least. Uh, the Rockwell blades are not regarded highly on average. I, th I have tried them, and I think they're okay, for me at least, but a lot of people think they're duds and think you're better off just pitching them. But if you've got some, why not give them a try? But I don't see any reason to buy a 100-pack like Rockwell wants to on their site. Uh, and then you've got, they'll come with the other two plates. This is the 6S, and the stainless steel one does come with all, all six settings, and which means three plates. And it, it's got kind of a magnetic snap there because... Uh, this is metal around here, and there must be some magnets in the corners or something. And so it's a high-quality looking arrangement here. And I just wanted to show you that. You can buy this same setup as a, a zinc alloy razor for cheaper, uh, $30 or something like that. You can only, But then you choose one plate. There's a the 2C and then the 6C. And uh, C being, I guess, chrome, perhaps. Uh, and it shaves very similarly to the stainless steel version. And it, I think it represents a decent value to, to the, the public. I do have the gunmetal one. Um, I don't use it very much, but I've got it. Um, and, and if you order the one with the one plate, the 2C, then you get maybe the... Do you get the two and the four plate, or do you get the one and the three plate? Probably the two and the four. I'm not exactly sure, but you only get one plate with it. If you order the 6C, you get just like this arrangement here with the stainless steel. You get all six choices, which equals three plates. Uh, so there we go. So that's a little bit about the Rockwell. Probably should have put that in a separate video. Oh, well. Ah, it's an old razor. There's a bunch of videos out there about it. So face is freshly renewed wet. And let's take this very nice lather on this excellent brush and see what happens. Oh, the scent is tremendous. Wow. I am not a big coffee drinker. The leather is a little bit more forward and the woodiness anchors it very nicely and I'm really happy with that. After that super smooth and soft Fanchurian that I used last time, these tips don't feel nearly as soft because that's a gelled brush and this one's not. Do a little rotation to get the side stuff off the side of the brush. In general, with Rockwell, if you have any quality control issues, I believe that their customer service is still on point, where they will, you know, make it make it right. Man. 
And this glissant base just still is working great. I appreciate how Will is continually trying to improve his base. I mean, that's just glorious. Look at that. I'm glad he's doing that so that he can kind of make sure he stays ahead of the game. Uh, he is, uh, you know, with Excelsior and the uh, Soft Heart, he's bringing in skincare elements, which is a focus over the last couple of years with many soap makers. All right, I think we are good. But I think this the glissant base is as a, a tremendous reminder of how a soap base can still be awesome, even after it's been a few years. All right, well, here we go. I haven't played with the Rockwell in a while. Let's see how we do. This cheek moving through the hair easily, no tugging at all. Nice cutting action. It's funny, my cheeks do not shave the same way, and it's not really predictable. Sometimes this one feels like it's a little bit more scrapey than the other one. Sometimes it's reversed. With the Rockwell, in the early days when I was using it, more often, I can only use, in, in terms of uh, enjoyable comfort, the two or the three setting. But one of the things I liked best about the Carve was that it had a much wider range of enjoyability for me. I got great shaves from the AA, the mildest gap that he has in Carve, all the way up to D. That's AA, A, A. B, C, and D. So that's five different settings. And then you bring in the open comb and it's a similar situation where so many work well for me. Now that was a very comfortable shave. I could see why a person would get this razor and enjoy it. Going cross grain, I am starting to kind of experience that slight lack of smoothness that the carve does have. A little bit of a scrapey. Effective and definitely worthy of the enjoyment. And you and people who might prefer it, I can it is a, a good working razor that has been around for a while and has done the job. Very comfortable second pass here. The neck ended up to be a little smoother for some reason than my cheeks. I don't know why. When I had the Rockwell in my hand, back when I had the one that I bought myself, Oh, the scent. Take a last minute to enjoy it because I'm about to put on the last pass. Man, that's so nice. When I was using it before, I received it and was kind of just disappointed. I had bought my first premium razor and it just didn't look doesn't look like a premium razor. It's industrial. The satin finish is, doesn't look as polished as a polished razor. Just kind of has a clunky look to it with the switchable plates that are 
upside down. A carve obviously didn't go with that model. They have, each plate does one setting. So then the bottom of the plate is able to look like the bottom of a razor. And so if you find which plate or plates that you enjoy, and this happens a lot with adjustables, you find what you enjoy and then the rest of the settings just sit by unused. In the case of a vintage Gillette adjustable, you might put your fat boy on three, shave with it that way for the rest of your life. A lot of people do that. And so all the, all the other settings are ignored. Uh, or a plate like Carve, you might uh, decide on that C plate as your money maker. And then you sell the rest of your base plates or you, or you happen to get lucky and land on the C first and you're happy. So all you need is one plate, right? Uh, and so that, that can happen sometimes too. But this one, uh, you know, it just, I got it kind of, um, because other people said it was awesome. And I don't think I got amazingly different shaves with it. And that's another thing that the only benefit that I, that it was giving me was I knew that this razor was going to be with me for a very long time because of the materials. But I didn't really see a jump in, in shave quality. And it wasn't a jump in attractiveness of the piece. Now, this is a very comfortable pass here, except as I'm trying to kind of go cross grain in the opposite direction right there, but that is normal for many razors to, to not be super comfortable right there. experience on that last pass and I like the fact that the uh, the three setting here is not feeling more aggressive toward the end sometimes the growth that you have on your face during the first pass will mask a level of aggression a certain amount of aggression on the razor because the blade is doing so much work in taking down that stubble that it's not irritating your skin. The blade is not messing with the surface of your skin as much as it is taking the stubble away. But then by the time you get that same level of aggression on the third pass, you don't have the hair, the follic the uh, strands of hair to act as your buffer anymore. And you get a little bit, you can possibly get some irritation. I've definitely seen that happen. This is not, not that way at all with this one. I, it continued to be more smooth and more smooth with each successive pass and so very nice experience uh, better than I remember and a good match to this blade there might be other blades that uh, that match it better and the carve would probably do the same job but just do it a little quieter a little bit more consistent and smooth and do it while me looking at it in a more attractive experiential kind of way and appreciate it a little bit more just because of the uh, aesthetics of the razor. Uh, but it's a good razor. It shaves well. It has shaven me well today. And um, I'm happy to have it uh, for a little while. And uh, judging with this, I... Yeah, I wonder if the four wouldn't be too... Could be a daily driver as well if I wanted. But I tell you what, I probably am going to get deficiency with the three... And so why, why get more potential for irritation if you've got an efficiency level that you already like? If you've got a closeness level at this point, like that I'm happy with. So no need to bump it up anymore, right? Yeah, I don't think I'm missing a base in the Barrister and Man series because I believe the diamond that I first got along the same time frame as this Leviathan tub I was intrigued by the diamond. So glad I pulled the trigger on that so many years ago because I've got the diamond in the glissant base. And then I also did get the diamond in the Excelsior base when it came out. 
and there's no in-between bases between those two, so I don't believe I was, as it turns out, forgetting one. All right, well, that was just terrific. Pretty much exactly amount of, uh, exactly the soap amount that I needed. We are looking at um, 20 milliliters of water used, which is going to be four teaspoons. And all I have to do is envision, envision my my little syringe, and I can do the conversion. Plenty of lather left if I want to do another pass, but a nice margin, uh, good consumption here, not wasting too much soap, and uh, just a, oh man, that's, that's a good one. And to finish out the logo story, you know, he did quit with that particular uh, logo, um, and he, in a response, to that fiasco, he had a contest where people voted and people could submit in the artwork for the uh, base uh, for the new Leviathan for the next season of release, you know? And so all of, the, many of the, I think I saw six different possibilities that we voted on and they were all pretty nice. So I think he landed on something really attractive. All right, I decided that History 101 from summer break is going to be the splash. I'm going to shake it up just in case it needs that. It's going to be the aftershave of today. It does have some, I think, some woody notes in there. So I think it'll be a friendly match to the Leviathan. Very nice. Summer break. I believe we talked about everything. The razor behaved well. I I don't really see how a person could say that the Rockwell would be smoother than the Carve. I think that, in a way, is, is almost an objective thing, but maybe not. Um, maybe just their set of variables, you know, somehow works with the, uh, with the Rockwell more than the Carve. But, but my guess is it's, in general, a uh, fairly objective uh, type of measurement in terms of the smoothness. And some people had different ranges of expectations. I could have a shave where I think it's not all that smooth and a little bit tenuous, but that same feeling with somebody else could be they per, their perception is smooth, maybe because they've experienced these even rougher razors than that. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, that was oh, good sense all around with that um, the Leviathan. I tell you what, I could I could enjoy that Leviathan as a splash. That's for sure. That leather is just a wonderful part of that accord. And the coffee and the woody parts are, are underneath and mix and work so well together. It's just tremendous. We'll take a moment to mention that the threading on the Rockwell is a nice, strong threading. But it's not the same threading as uh, a lot of other handles. And I can't remember exactly what it is. If you want to look on my website, sugardaddyshaves.com, there is a page on there about razor threading, and it has a section uh, for the Rockwell, and uh, I, I can't remember exactly. I don't think it's the metric, the, uh, uh, the, MO, the MO805 or something like that. Um, I, I think it's something else, and uh, that's listed there. And so you can't take like one of Maggard's handles and put on this razor and have it fit exactly right. There's a slight difference there. But all stainless steel and so you know it's going to last a long time. It's a, it is a beast and if you end up with one, especially if you got it a great deal and you like the looks of it, that sort of thing, then you know why not use it for the rest of your life if you want and uh, and give it to your kids, <laughs> you know. It's a, um, a bit of a beast, but it's because it's own character, and you may like the way it shaves more than the carve, like I, I might. 
uh, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's it's a, re a very respectable razor. It's kind of the king of the premium, uh, the reachable premium market for people who can't afford the uh, uh, the Wolfman razors and and other expensive ones like that. The uh, Rockwell represented a pretty good uh, point where the Timeless was up uh, in that range, but then you didn't get as many settings. You know, the Rockwell was uh, had had the plates six different choices to, uh, to choose from. And so it uh, definitely had its place in the market uh, for a good while. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Oh man, the scent here with the History 101. I'm just enjoying this right now. So that was 30 seconds of loading and 20, 20 milliliters of water used. Well, I'm so glad that the Leviathan scent is still available on Barrister and Man's line. If it's in the Excelsior, then uh, in why not? Let's keep it around. Uh, it's a classic. I, uh, I think it's it's uh, it is timeless. I really do. I think it is, the notes that are used could apply in eons past, and I think uh, in the future as well because it's just uh, tremendous. It's it's not so coffee that it kind of has a niche but the coffee just adds a, a, a richness to it and a different level and a uniqueness that, um, that the wood and the leather by itself might have been a little bit too, I don't know, standard. I mean, enjoyable, but a little bit too uh, standard. And so there's some warmth that's added with the coffee that I think changes the whole thing into something uh, magical. And maybe that's why it's still around on Bar in Barrister and Man's lineup. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, that's today's shave. Uh, wonderful experience all the way around. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Uh, just, just a nice one. Uh, glad to try the Rockwell and uh, and remember how it felt. And uh, and so we're good if you are just starting out and you want to try out the Rockwell without maybe the cost. Uh, give that maybe the six C a, a thought. You know, it's not going to last as long as the stainless steel version, but it, the good thing is you can wash that out very nicely uh, and dry out those threads after every shave. And so you can get it to last 10, 15, 20 years potentially uh, because of that ability to clean, uh, to dry out that and prevent that corrosion that may eventually, um, you know, happen. So uh, very nice. And everything else was just, was just stellar. So this is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I sure hope there's something in this video that is going to help you guys out. Um, just a, uh, man, I sure didn't, I didn't realize how much I missed this uh, scent right here until tonight. Uh, I believe with the, with the Leviathan, he had to change his logo because um, some other company stepped in, kind of used a similar logo. Was it Murphy and McNeil, maybe? Um, and that uh, that's not nice, right? Shouldn't do that. All right. I think we're good. You guys, take care. Have a good night.